it's a relative solution and not an absolute solution. Uh, I can't imagine a better example than um, the jam factory where preciousness is really defined by the entire process from um, beginning to, to display that uh, um, evokes a, a memory of something being crafted by hand. It's looking really at local processes going to a global market. And the learning environment and the interns that are at the uh, jam factory are in and of themselves uh, a learning environment in terms of their rotation. There's much more detail that I could give on the jam factory, but it's also important to note that this was, uh, this was initiated during the, the Dunstan era, and uh, looking back at a campaign, um, uh, a little campaign, not speech, but, uh, and not slogan, uh, but uh, he was known to say that we, the state that we live in is more than a state of mind, ahead of all its time, will set the new design. And Jam Factory, as an outcome of that era, still exists, I think, as one of the most recognized um, environments and uh, attributes of South Australia. Um, last but not least is um, life. Uh, I'm sure you'll recognize the origin of um, such artwork in this case, um, but this really puts us back to the future. Design is about translating aspirations, about desires, about hopes. Um, it looks at um, all aspects of creativity, not just space, uh, but um, the structure of music, the choreography of dance, uh, the um, staging of, of a play. In many ways, when we go back to the origins of Aboriginal culture that have to do with dance, dreaming, song, and stories, and particularly the relationship with the land, and very much a whole-of-life approach. I can't think of any other definition of design that might be more appropriate in this environment. And I say back to the future because that was a sustainable way of, of living and learning, where experience was potentially the best lesson. So that moves us on to series two, which are assets or distinctions in South Australia. And I must say that this is an ongoing conversation. This is a work in progress. This is something that's been formulated um, through discussions and debate and um, revisions over the last 12 weeks. But I did want to identify beyond these pockets of excellence that have been articulated in the first series that um, these assets or distinctions are probably ones that will lead themselves to uh, a uniqueness of South Australia in terms of its authenticity, its cultural identity, um, a sense of place, and above all, um, attractive to those who live here and um, visitors as well as potential new residents. An observation beyond people that I can safely make about South Australia, given these um, wonderful examples I just showed, is that in many ways, South Australia is like a, a series of exquisite musicians with instruments, but it's yet to become a symphony. And one could say, and I've been quoted as saying this, it's a series of episodes yet without a story. And, um, or, you know, it's parts with, um, without yet becoming really an engine. And so these assets or distinctions, I'm beginning to pull threads that might uh, lead to a deeper understanding of um, how we, we can look at products, the landscape, to develop themes for South Australia, wherein uh, any designer may, may look at these considerations, whether it's a product or a precinct that uh, should be addressed. And I'm also asking some questions about South Australia in leveraging those assets toward building culture. Um, certainly beginning uh, at the point I left off about uh, natural heritage and landscape diversity. Again, this is just a collage, it's an array of images that are intended to look from the very small scale to the very large scale, but also look at and ask you as an audience to begin to make connections to weave those stories. Uh, how uh, 
they are socially significant, environmentally significant, or economically um, driven. Clive Owen, the actor who uh, just starred in, um, or who was starring in the movie The Boys Are Back, which was filmed in South Australia, was apparently quoted last week as saying, South Australia is the most beautiful place on earth. Um, I think that's a, a fairly good endorsement and also fairly accurate. Um, but there's a tendency to think of South Australia as a city and not as a state. So when you look at this theme, you might ask yourself, how is Adelaide a gateway to this kind of um, adventure? And could we think of South Australia more as a journey and not as a destination? Um, environmental sustainability. Uh, certainly, South Australia has advanced policies and very admirable targets. Um, so that there's leadership in this in this regard coming from the top down. But what's also impressive about South Australia is people's attitudes um, toward the environment, and it tends to be one that they want to do it and not they have to do it. So you have a bottom up and a top down approach that leads to um, products and initiatives uh, that are very diverse in nature and. Um, have the potential to be mutually reinforcing. It's also interesting thematically that South Australia has wind, it has geothermal, and it also has sun, and how those begin to come together to form uh, a real uh, uh, global recognition. Um, one of the questions we might ask here is how to transform a threat or a, a vital concern like water into a global expertise so that it's not a liability but it's rather an opportunity. And given the political leadership and the initiatives on the individual level, how does South Australia really become a global model for environmental sustainability? Um, certainly there's no denying the significance of uh, Agriculture, food and wine um, has international prominence, um, but one might ask that that activity is um, certainly experienced in dining and it's experienced in beautiful landscapes like the Barossa or McLaren Vale, uh, but how is that, how's that experience reflected potentially in an urban environment, for example urban farming? How do we feel that more than at the central market or um, at a particular cafe of restaurant or restaurant. In many ways, it's how's the concept of vine to dine carried out in public space. I've spoken about early childhood development, um, which is emulated nationally and recognized internationally. Um, early childhood development is seen as the relationship between education, health, and services. And it looks at not only a child, Thank you.